Assalamualaikum. Inshallah, we'll start with the Quran recitation uh, from Sheikh Hassan to start the program. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر أن الله أنزل من السماء فأخرجنا به ثمرات مختلفا ألوانها ومن الجبال جدد بيض وحمر مختلف ألوانها ومن الجبال جدد بيض وحمر مختلف ألوانها ومن الناس والدواب والأنعام مختلف ألوانه كذلك إنما يخشى إن الله بعباده 
لخبير بصير ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير جنات عبد يدخلونها يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ولؤلؤا ولباسهم فيها حرير وقالوا الحمد لله الذي أذهب عنا الحزن وقالوا الحمد لله الذي أذهب عنا الحزن إن ربنا إن ربنا لغفور شكور الذي أحلنا دار المقامة من فضله لا يمسنا فيها نصر لا يمسنا فيها نصب ولا يمسنا فيها لوب صدق الله العظيم First of all, I just want to start the program uh, with thanking everyone for being here, especially the students. Uh, you know, the amount of time and dedication that all of you put in to being able to complete this program or you know, graduate today, and also the ones that are still working in this program. I know the amount of time and effort goes into it because I did try it. I mean, I didn't. You know, I didn't make it through the semester, but I did try it. So I know it's a lot of work. And I just want to congratulate all of you because, you know, this is a big deal. This is our first graduation for this masjid. And inshallah, you, you will be the spokespeople for this program moving forward, inshallah. 
So I want to make sure also that we you know, thank you know, our educators here, the Imams, Sheikh Yassi, Sheikh Jaffer, Sheikh Hassan, and then Hassan himself as well here too for making sure he administers the program and helps it run smoothly and successfully. And he's been um, the point person for everybody for this program, so thank you, Sam, for being available. The Al Hidayah Adult Seminary was founded on the premise that accessible Islamic learning is a crucial means by which Muslim identity can be protected in the West. This seminary program seeks to offer students a diverse curriculum that engages their hearts and their intellect by following the traditional methods of teaching and learning. Our pilot two year certification exceeded expectations in terms of student participation and engagement. Currently, we instruct over 140 adults, many of whom are youth educators, who implement what they learn in their own classrooms. As the pilot certification program approaches its completion, we're looking ahead to create more immersive programs that can further advance the competency and skill of our students. Long term, our goal is to establish an institution of higher Islamic learning, which can become a hallmark of Muslim identity in the West, inshallah. I want to start the program with introducing Sheikh Jaffer to open this graduation ceremony. Sheikh Jaffer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrahi sadri wa yassirri amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antad wa hada. This is indeed a happy occasion and I will try in few minutes, few points to tell you why it is a happy occasion. Number one, Alhamdulillahi alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat. First of all, is praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one all the good deeds are being achieved. It is because of his support and help. So all of us, graduates and others, we have to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Alhamdulillah. We were not able to achieve what we are achieving if it were not for his support and his help. Number two, number two, as we know, shukr, being grateful, is not a lip service. Is not a few words to be repeated. Shukr is action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he addressed Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman and Al Dawood, he said, I'malu Al Dawood shukra wa qadeelun min ibadi al shakur. O you, the people of Dawood, act in gratefulness. So therefore, if we are saying Alhamdulillah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he gave us all of this, we are expected to act with that shukr by using this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's number two. That's number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also taught us, مَن لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسَ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ Whoever did not give thanks, to the people who have done good to him or her or to us, such a, per such a person actually did not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we have to spend a moment by thanking the people behind this achievement. And the most important person behind this achievement is you. It is you. If it were not you, this program will not be here today. You, the students. You, the student who made us work, who made us act, who made us search, who made us collect information. It is you, students, who should be thanked. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. 
And number two, those behind this program from many, many, many people, teachers, staff, the leadership of the masjid, many people actually were there when this program started. They said, we are here to support this program. They said, we are here to make sure that whatever this program needs to needs, it will be there. And may Allah reward you. Whether it is the board of trustees, the board of directors, staff, many people. But I have to say many thanks to the person who initiated the program. Sheikh Yassin. May Allah reward you. I remember three years ago, and I think he remembers the time and the place. And I, I will remind him if he, don't, if he doesn't remember. He always tells me that my memory is better than his. And my, I, I, I'm twice in age, more than twice. Bro. So we were in Istanbul. We were in Istanbul visiting Sheikh Mufdali. Sometimes around the end of August, beginning of September. I was in Algeria and coming to the United States. And he was here and going to Algeria. We met there for a few days. So we were visiting Sheikh Mutar and in the van that was provided for us by the team of Sheikh Mutar to take us around in Istanbul, may Allah reward them. May Allah reward them. So in that van, Sheikh Yassin said, we have talked about this program before. But then, he was insisting. And I had some hesitation. And I told him why I had that hesitation. But he kept insisting, persuading me that we had to do this. And Alhamdulillah, I'm glad I accepted. <laughs> and uh, a, lot of, a lot of credit goes to Sheikh Hussein. May Allah reward you. May Allah reward you for being there, for initiating this program, for managing this program, for persuading all of us to make sure that we are there for this program to succeed. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this in the Mizan of your Hasanat in the Day of Judgment. Then, at that time, Sheikh Hussam was not there. But then Sheikh Hussam came. Sheikh Hussam said, no problem. I am part of the team. And what? A beautiful person. What a beautiful person. Alhamdulillah. But see, many of those people who participated in this program are not here today. There are many people who came and did some weekend seminar. There are many people who gave lectures. There are many people who contributed from far away. And there are many people who attended the program in initially. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them away. So we have to pray for everything. Everyone who participated in the success of the program today, we say, may Allah reward you, whether you are here or you are not here. <clears throat> the next point, the next point I really would like us to see that this is today a milestone. You know, for many years, we were struggling just trying to manage and maintain having a weekend school. Many people, many of you, some of you are graduates of this weekend school for many years. But now, go and visit many centers, many massages. I just came from Texas a few days ago. And I visited many massages. And almost every masjid has a seminary program. It is really a milestone that is telling you that the Muslim community is changing. If 30 years ago, if 30 years ago what the Muslim community was concerned is about having a place for five days in Salawat and then having a weekend school, now almost every major masjid, they have a full-time hikr program, they have a part-time hikr program, they have, uh, they have, they have full-fledged youth program and some of them do have a seminar. This is a milestone. And alhamdulillah that our masjid is in that, in that category. And we pray that every masjid 
should be having something like that or even better. Bi'idnillahi ta'ala. But what does that mean? Are we really looking for quantity? Are we really looking for prestige? Are we really looking for degrees to be distributed? Or what is behind all this? If you have heard the introduction of Ahsan, he pointed to something very important that I would like all of us to keep in mind. What is it? Two words. Muslim identity in the West. Muslim identity in the West. If your children or you, you are growing up in a Muslim country, most likely you have nothing to fear that they will keep their deen. They may have some problems with their character and akhlaq, but most likely they will keep their deen. But over here, we have to struggle to maintain our deen, to maintain our faith, because we should not take it for granted. And that's what is at, at stake, is the Muslim identity in the West. And hopefully, a program like this is a milestone, is a, is a, is a, is a very important building towards maintaining that Muslim identity in the West. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, especially the graduates, what we expect behind the teachings of these courses is not mere is not mere accumulation of knowledge it's not mere accumulation of information it's not a taraf al taqafi as we call it in arabic a taraf al taqafi meaning yes we have enough information so then when we sit down we have something to discuss to have a dialogue so then i can show that i have some information Hopefully, all the teachers over here conveyed a very important, strong message. What we expect is character. We expect that this knowledge will contribute to maintaining the Muslim character. Changing that which is ugly in us to that which is good. We would like to make sure that whatever is being taught is going to be translated into action. Action in the classroom action at all, action in the street, in our relationships with people around us, Muslims and non-Muslims. So, this is the message, my dear brothers and sisters, that we expect, and may Allah forgive us, we are not perfect. May Allah forgive us, as teachers, as people who are in the leadership, we, are, we have a lot to do to really change ourselves. But hopefully, we pass some message to all of you that there is some work that needs to be done and we have to do it together. So there is no time to elaborate on those akhlaqiyat, on those beautiful characteristics of talibul ilm, of the seeker of knowledge. And you have attended an entire seminar that actually was devoted to this point. Akhlaqiyat talibul ilm, the characteristics the adab of the person who is seeking knowledge. There are books written about this topic, but that is really the subject of what we expect from our students, inshallah, to, to do. The other point which is very important, there is no time limit for knowledge. Knowledge has no end. من المهدي إلى From the cradle to the grave. Therefore, what we were able to cover is basically just a drop from the ocean or a drop in the ocean so there is a lot to do to continue therefore we expect all of us to continue seeking knowledge hopefully we succeeded in making you taste some of the good taste of that knowledge in every course that has been studied and therefore we have to continue my dear brothers and sisters the next point, and it, the picture that's being seen over here is much more eloquent than my own words. And the picture is, look how many sisters are graduating, how many brothers are graduating. So I don't have to comment on that. But being a man, I have to defend my, my brothers. 
you know, they are working hard trying to bring bread to to the family and to the children. So sometimes, sometimes that can be used as an excuse, but it's not a good excuse. It's not a good excuse. We have to do better. We have to do better, our brothers. But Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm so happy that our sisters devoted so much of their time to really be in the classroom and learn. Those who could not be in the classroom, they were learning remotely. And some of them, they were learning remotely from different countries. Wallahi Rabbi, this is a good sign. This is a good sign that the Muslim woman is not what others are saying about her. The Muslim woman, when, it is, when she is needed, she is there. And alhamdulillah, that we are able to offer this opportunity. But please don't stop, continue. The next step is make sure whatever you learn is going to be used, as they said. Then, my last point. My last point, my dear brothers and sisters, as we, we always discuss as teachers, what is our priority? Is it the quantity or the quality? How many times we have discussed that? And we are discussing that in our community. Our top priority is the quality. We would like Behind the quantity, there will be quality. We would like to make sure that this ilm that's being taught, only a small portion of it, hopefully, inshallah, will produce quality. Quality of character, quality of akhlaq, and quality of action. So hopefully, hopefully, as I have seen actually in some other marakis, in some other masajid and centers, where this first group who graduated Soon, inshallah, they will be teachers. Soon they will be teachers. You will be soon, if you really do a good job by seeking knowledge, that you will be offering courses. And I have seen actually in some seminaries like Sheikh Arsalan and others, where assistant to the teachers were the students who were students just a few years before. So there is so much hope that inshallah these things will change our community and change it to the better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and congratulations to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward everyone who participated and contributed to this success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Jazakumullahu khayran wa barakallahu feekum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Jazakallah Sheikh Jaffer, thank you for your continued guidance and leadership for our community. May Allah reward you, and inshallah we continue to achieve greatness in the community. Next, I want to uh, introduce Sheikh Yassin. He will uh, go over the overview of our seminary program. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Salatu Wassalamu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in. Before I start my presentation, and I hope it will be short, I would like to comment on the story of Istanbul that Sheikh Jafar shared with us. The reason why I would like to comment, and that Sheikh Jafar said, if you remember this story, and uh, I can't forget this story for several reasons. Because at that time, Sheikh, I had a big fight with my wife. <laughs> and she's here, and by just looking at her, she reminded me of the story. She said, we came to have vacation. And I remember after we came from the van, Sheikh, we went to the lobby and we spent hours discussing the details. So at that time, she was very upset, and I would like to thank her today for her patience. And uh, because indeed I promised her to spend a good time in Istanbul. That was my good time. I'm not sure about her. So, inshallah, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. But I really don't have any credit in this program. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Jafar, for your trust and your support. And we'd like to thank the leadership, as Sheikh Jafar said, the board of trustees and the board of directors. 
who support this program and they, they, they did their best to uh, have this program inshallah ta'ala achieve its success at that time brother Adnan was with us uh, was with the board and he was very supportive as well and Jazakumullah Khair also brother Ahsan when he took over he was very supportive I would like to thank brother Hussam Jazakumullah Khair he really contributed a great deal to the success of this program and each one of you brothers and sisters I would like to to actually open with the hadith that Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu Sayyiduna Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say every time they meet the student of knowledge they, they used to tell them marhaban bi wasiyyati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam often times he told the Sahaba to welcome, take care of the students of the seekers of knowledge so Sahaba radiallahu alayhi Every time they see the student of knowledge, the seekers of knowledge, they used to tell them, Marhaban, welcome the wasiya, the will of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are the will. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us, commanded us, urged us to take care of you and to respect you and to make your journey, inshallah ta'ala, successful and easy. And we did our best, brothers and sisters, to help you. Of course, we had so many shortcomings, we had so many mistakes. But we did our best in Jazakumullah Khair for your patience. Inshallah Ta'ala, in my presentation, I would like to give uh, an overview, brief explanation of our program and what are the objectives and details of this program, Inshallah Ta'ala. First, the program details, uh, as you may know, brothers and sisters, we started this program just three months before COVID, January 2020. And I think two months after we started, we had to go online. But Alhamdulillah, we were afraid because we just started the program. We were so worried that the program will fail because we just started and we are going immediately online. But Alhamdulillah, the students, the community showed so much support and, and, and commitment and devotion to the ilm. We started with 135 students at the first class. And Alhamdulillah, the number kept increasing every semester. And then the average number of students we had every semester was about 177 students. Over the last two years, or the last uh, five semesters, actually two years and a half, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this program served over 100, actually over 350 students over the last two years and a half, Alhamdulillah. We have three teachers who are on site, Sheikh Ja'far, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Hussam, Jazakallah Khair, and myself. And also we have several community scholars and leaders who visit us from different communities. And alhamdulillah, this is one of the unique uh, things about our seminary that every semester we do our best to host at least two scholars, female and male scholars from different communities. And the number one, we'd like to bring different perspectives to our community. Number two, we wanted our community to be exposed to these resources and scholars and ulama and mashayikh. We'd like our community, seminary students in particular, and our community at large, to get to know these scholars, to get to know their area of expertise, to get to know their strength, and if they are in need of any ilm or course of science, they can reach out to them. We also have two uh, admins, Brother Hussam, primarily and recently. Where is uh, Sister Sister Tasneem? Sister Tasneem joined us recently to help. Since the program uh, uh, kept increasing, we needed support, and Jazakallah Khair, Sister Tasneem joined us recently. Uh, Alhamdulillah, in these five semesters, we have delivered 15 courses. In, in the program, we have two types of courses. There are courses who take an entire semester, once a week, one hour and a half every class. And there are courses that were covered in an intensive weekend. So, the 15 week courses, Alhamdulillah, we have covered so far 15 courses, among them Aqidah, among them Tizkiya, Sira, Tijweed, Quranic Sciences. Tafsir, Hadith, 
and so on and so forth. And we have also covered so many courses by visiting scholars in weekends. We, for example, we brought Sheikh Yasser family to cover uh, a, a topic of so much importance, modern ideologies, and how Muslims should respond to these ideologies. We have brought Sheikh Hassan Lishab to cover Shema'il Muhammadiyah, the, this beautiful course that was one of our best courses, the Shema'il of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, we brought Dr. Haifa Yunus to cover several courses. We brought uh, Senator Zainab Al-Ansari to cover several courses. So, alhamdulillah, we have covered several, so many courses. And, and, and by the grace of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that was achieved, and inshallah Ta'ala will continue to provide these teaching and these courses and topics to our community. Next. I would like to talk about some of the objectives of this program. Somebody might ask a question why this program was established in the first place. What was the need? So alhamdulillah, I think everybody believes in the importance of knowledge. However, there were so many objectives why we established this program, why we felt the need to start this program. Number one, as, as you may know, brothers and sisters, so many for so many decades, brothers and sisters in the West they had to travel to very far countries to seek the traditional knowledge. People used to go to Egypt, people used to go to Saudi Arabia, or Morocco, or here or there. So what we are trying to do is to make this knowledge, the sacred knowledge, the Islamic sciences, accessible to our communities here in the West. As a matter of fact, even people who are not interested who were not necessarily motivated to travel and seek knowledge by the presence of these sciences and courses and scholars, so many people get motivated. So Alhamdulillah, we provided these courses for those who were interested and also it was a means, a tool to motivate others who were not initially motivated. Of the objective of this course, brothers and sisters, or this program is creating an environment of sohba. And I think I would like to highlight this, this point. Sheikh Jafar spoke about the we don't want to be deceived by accumulating so much information, so much knowledge, because that might be hujja against us on the day of judgment. What we are trying to do in this program on this seminary, actually to create a support system, to create an environment where so many people believe in the same goal. So together we can improve ourselves, together we can be better Muslims, together we can uplift our Iman, together we can raise our 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 relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our love to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this program is trying to create this, this, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ This is the concept of sohbah, the concept of, of support system. And I think this is very, very important because we are weak by ourselves and we are strong together. On the objective of this program, as it was said by Prophet Ahsan, Jafar as well, is preserving Muslim identity in so many ways. Number one, just by teaching the fundamentals, by teaching the, 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 the divine ideals and the prophetic teachings and spreading knowledge in our community, we are protecting our deen to be corrupted, we are protecting our deen to be changed like it happened to other religions. And by the way, for the last 1400 years, this is how our religion was protected. Knowledge, halaqat, seminaries. And you go to Muslim communities, everywhere, you find khalaya of ilm and ulama. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his religion. So brothers and sisters, together, we are contributing to the preservation of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way of preserving our Muslim identity is by creating more teachers, more mentors, more people who are educated to deal with the modern challenges 
One of our courses that we cover in the seminary is modern ideologies and how to respond to them. There's so much doubts and attacks about our fundamentals. Today, we are in this June, the Pride Month, just we are doubting, we are debating the very basic fitrah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether there is only two genders or more or less. How we can protect our communities other than knowledge, spread knowledge. Knowledge is power, brothers and sisters. Of the, of the, of, of the objectives of this program is, as we said, give lot qualified teachers. Alhamdulillah, not to only to our masjid, maybe in partnership with other masajid in the capital district, this program, by providing more teachers, more resources, can feed the rest of the masajid, the rest of the institutions, the rest of the centers in the capital district by weekend school teachers, or and teachers, educators, mentors. So inshallah ta'ala, we can, this is of the aim that we have inshallah ta'ala in the future, that we can provide more teachers and resources to our community and also responding to modernity and preserving our identity has it is very similar to the other to the other point and i would like i would like to also talk about uh, the 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 inshallah ta'ala the vision of the program next slide or before this are we surviving or are we striving meaning we are just trying to react to what's happening around us oh, there is doubt, there is misconceptions, attacks against our identity, our, 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 our faith, our deeds so are we trying just to be to respond or are we striving by doing that to others instead of just being reactive trying just to preserve our Muslim identity of course this is very essential but of the objective of this program is to reach out people who are in colleges, alhamdulillah, have I think 350 students, I don't, I don't remember now the exact numbers, Hussain maybe has a better uh, uh, memory, but we had plenty of students, they, they were college students. So in their essays, right? And brothers and sisters, as mothers, as educators, as teachers, how we can do that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we are equipped with knowledge, our ideology, our faith, our iman, our aqidah, our history. Right? So of the objective of this program is actually da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is of the mission of Muslims here in the West. Next, brother. Sir. And inshallah ta'ala, briefly we can talk about long-term vision. Long-term vision is to develop a full-time institute, inshallah ta'ala by adding more teachers. What we mean full-time program, alhamdulillah, right now, we are teaching twice a week, right? Few hours a week, brothers and sisters, they are coming after work or after college. But inshallah ta'ala, the aim that we would like inshallah ta'ala by, by adding more teachers and the resources, we can cater for different segments of the community. We can cater for the brothers and sisters who are committed, young professionals, mothers and fathers and parents, but also we can cater for those who are dedicated and committed. We can cater for the average community as well as we can cater for advanced students, inshallah ta'ala. So this is, this is inshallah ta'ala from, from the, 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 the long-term vision of this program, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, of this, uh, of the, the, the long-term vision as well, is creating opportunities to leadership. You know, our brothers and sisters who are running the masajid, they are doing tremendous work, volunteering their time, their energy, right? You're talking about the, 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 if you count the number of hours that the board members and other key people in the masajid, how much time they are putting, is tremendous. What we are thinking in the future, there could be classes and courses for those who are seeking to be leaders in this masajid to be equipped with the necessary knowledge because they are a very, very key part in making the decision in these massage institutions. So it will be so beautiful 
And these members and these leaders would be equipped with Islamic knowledge, would be empowered with these signs, inshallah ta'ala, because they are leaders in this message. And of the, of the objective of this program is partnership with other institutions as well. Why, at some point, inshallah ta'ala, we might seek accreditation and we might have a partnership with local colleges and institutions that they can send their students to our seminary and their courses is recognized, credited, inshallah ta'ala. We will be offering whether history or Islamic ideology or other courses and it will be recognized, accredited by local colleges, inshallah ta'ala. There are so many beautiful goals, inshallah ta'ala, pray for us, inshallah ta'ala, that we can achieve this goal, inshallah ta'ala, in the near future. Next, Allah Hussain. The plan for next year, starting from next semester, inshallah ta'ala, there will be two levels. Alhamdulillah, by this semester, we finish the first class, the first graduate class of level one. So the graduate students, the good news is, the journey is so long. This is just the beginning, inshallah ta'ala. Your effort to be recognized, appreciated, but this is just the beginning. There is so much to be learned, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala, starting from next year, next semester, we will be offering several levels in the same time. So for beginners, we will be offering for them courses as well as for those who graduated, inshallah ta'ala, they will be uh, uh, offered with advanced courses, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, I would like to go to the next slide, Hussam. Inshallah ta'ala, uh, the next the plan for the, the, for the summer, we have a few courses in summer, I'd like to share them with you. Next weekend, inshallah ta'ala, we have a course. Hajj Umar Afiq, inshallah ta'ala. If you are interested, please enroll, inshallah ta'ala. Especially the Muslim of the Hajj is approaching, inshallah ta'ala. In July, we'll be having men's retreat with Sheikh Hassan Lishab, inshallah ta'ala, in the Ajarundan. And also in August, we'll be having a women's retreat with Dr. Kaifa Yunus as well, inshallah ta'ala, in the Ajarundan. In August, uh, the, the last weekend of August, we'll be having a course with a great scholar from Syria, Sheikh Samir al-Nas. It will be about the etiquettes of the people of the Qur'an. This great book of Imam al-Nawawi, At-Tibyan fi Adab Hamad al-Qur'an. Inshallah ta'ala, it will be covered at that time. I don't want to go into so much details. I just want to give an overview of this program. And alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless all of us, students, teachers, leadership, and administrators, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to use us in the way that pleases him. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah shaykh yaseen. Next I would like to have Shaykh Hussain come up here to talk to us about his experience as a teacher in the seminary program. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. First of all, I would like to thank you all for coming and to share with us this last moment of graduation of a number of our students. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى continue to bless all of you. Uh, I will, inshallah, be very concise. I know that everyone is waiting. You can't wait. And everyone is waiting for the, the, the most important part of this ceremony, which is the award appreciation part. So we're going to be, inshallah, very, very concise. No more than five minutes. And you can come. So, on behalf of myself and on behalf of our teachers, Sheikh Yasin, Sheikh Ja'far, Jazamullah wa Khayr, I would like to thank you all, all the students, for being part of this program. 
for your positive contribution in this program. You made this program successful, alhamdulillahi, rabbil alameen. Also, I would like to thank Brother Hussam, a special thank to Brother Hussam, who was uh, the, the coordinator of this program and who made a smooth communication between students, teachers, and administration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, Hussam. So as a teacher, it was an honor for me and it was a very good experience that I taught uh, several courses, several classes, different topics with you, alhamdulillah, ta'ala. So we share with, with, uh, with, uh, with together a blessed moment, alhamdulillah, in seeking knowledge, including hard moments, sometimes homeworks and assignments and, and exams. All of this, alhamdulillah, it is a part of seeking knowledge and how that's how we learn. So teaching in this program, alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen, it gave us the, the opportunity as teacher to review our knowledge, to review what we have learned from our, from our mashayikh, our teachers, and also to refresh our memory, to refresh our information and it was a very good opportunity for us with all your questions, with all, mashallah, so many students, they were very eager, keen to learn, you, show, you have shown the, 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 the devotion and the willingness to learn and to seek knowledge and it was really really helpful for us as teacher and it made us more and more enthusiastic inshallah ta'ala to give you the, the knowledge the second these courses gave us as teachers the opportunity to pay the care gave us what the opportunity to pay the care not the zakah of money not the zakah of of, of property, not of the zakah of merchandise or sheep, alhamdulillah, we don't have this. But I'm talking about zakat al ilm. Zakat al ilmi ta'alim. The zakat of having knowledge is to teach you. Alhamdulillah, we have this opportunity to teach whatever knowledge we have. I'm not claiming that we have knowledge, but the little that we have, alhamdulillah ta'ala, it was a great opportunity for us to share with you this information and this little bit of knowledge. So, as I said, it was a very successful experience throughout these two years and a half, inshallah ta'ala. And I will conclude with three pieces of advice for myself first and then for the graduate students as well, the other students. So the first piece of advice is Now you have acquired the knowledge, you have some knowledge, so then what? You have to stick to the knowledge that you have learned. I mean you have to implement, to apply, to learn the knowledge that you have learned. Put this knowledge into actions. Translate this knowledge into actions. And this is what Sheikh Ja'far said, the aim, the ultimate purpose of having knowledge is not for the sake of the knowledge itself, but it is for the sake of applying and acting upon this knowledge. The second piece of advice is please keep reviewing what you have learned. Review and study what you have learned. Otherwise, the end result will be that you will forget everything and you don't want that to happen. So try to review individually or have a group collectively, try to have weekly or monthly session together to review what you have learned and otherwise, as I said, you will forget. And the third piece of advice, I will conclude with that, inshallah ta'ala, this course, this seminary course should be 
the first footstep. So you should not stop there, as Sheikh Yassin said. So these courses should be your first footstep to, in, in your journey of seeking knowledge. So never stop, never think that you have learned, that you have acquired knowledge, that you have alim and scholar. By the way, I don't like these titles. Do not use these titles at all. Alim, scholar, mufti, nothing of that. We have just put our foot in the ocean, as the, as the Sheikh Jafar said, and you know, the knowledge never stops. So have this mindset to continue, inshallah, and to pursue the knowledge, to change the way of seeking knowledge, insha'Allah ta'ala, and always remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ As long as you are pursuing the knowledge, that you are seeking knowledge, this is a good sign for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for you. So stick to this way of seeking knowledge, inshaAllah ta'ala, it will be good for you. InshaAllah, Jazakumullah khair. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa rahimu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're perfect. So inshallah, we are going to start the awards uh, ceremony part of the program, uh, handing out the diplomas to our uh, graduates. So inshallah, the stage, um, we'll get the stage set up. At this time, if I could have uh, three of the board of trustee members, Dr. Patti, Brother Abdul Mateen, and Brother Mustafa, and I'm sorry, Brother Ahmed Yusuf too. Uh, you could please join us here on the stage. So, if everyone can just pay attention, uh, in you know, in order for us to make this smooth and for everyone to get pictures with the imams and your uh, diplomas, we're requesting everyone. Once I call your name, if you could please come up on the stage from over here, everyone, brothers, sisters, as I call you up, the imams will hand you your awards. You can then take a picture with them, and we'll exit from there. Unfortunately, there is no step there, so you may have to jump off or flip off or whatever is easiest for you. Um, if you do need a step, we can, uh, you know, Hussam can provide that, inshallah. I will, be pro I will be announcing everyone's name. I apologize in advance if I pronounce it wrong. Um, you can uh, forgive me, or when you come up here, yell at me uh, for pronouncing it wrong. It's, it's your day, so do whatever you want, inshallah. Shall everyone is in position? Alright. The first award goes to Afshan Siddiqui. So if you could please come up here and say it, inshallah. Next up, Ahmed Al Rafai. Aisha Muhammad. Elena Noor Sarah. Amani Al Mukhtar. It's also in cursive too, so it's a little hard to read. I apologize. Aisha Murshid. Dr. Lil Afraz Sultana. Hasabullah Adam.
Iqbal Goma. Sam Abdullah. <laughs> Kahina Al Ibrahim. Al Ibrahim. <laughs> Karima Tera. Muhammad Jabi <laughs> Mariam Baraka <laughs> Mimi Zen Muhammad Azman Ribbon <laughs> Mas Fatima Khatam Moad Sabkawi <laughs> Muhammad Zahid Ayar Nada Mohammed <laughs> Nahid Akhtar <laughs> Nasreen Morsi Nuria Rasuli <laughs> Rauda Abdul Hakim. Rizwana Begum Muhammad Asif <laughs> Sabrina Gauri Sabrina Gauri, sorry <laughs> Sapa Yusuf Hussain <laughs> Sahar Ismail
Shahina Rashid. Uzma Chaudhary. Uzma Popal. Wasila Abdullah. Yasmin Issa. Zahir Nazir. Zainab Ayar. <laughs> so inshallah we have some additional awards for some of the administrators of the program. With Tasneem Ahmed. Hassan <laughs> Ahmed. Sheikh Hussain. <laughs> Sheikh Yassin. And Sheikh Jaffer. So Jazakallah everyone, congratulations to the graduates. Uh, inshallah we will continue our program with a video from the speakers uh, that were in attendance for many of the, uh, the sessions for this program. So inshallah just give us a couple minutes and we'll transition to that. Again, congratulations. Bye -bye.
So the program is not over. We still have the videos and a couple more speakers. Imam Yaki, we still need you here. So inshallah, we still have the speaker. We still have some speakers left. We also have food, so we obviously don't want you to leave without the food as well. So please just give us a few minutes, and inshallah, we'll transition to the next part. Um, Memory see during his talk, he mentioned how no. it's very important that this project of the seminary is not a project that is restricted only to our message, but is something that branches out, that touches the community as a whole within the area in which we live. And by that token, we really sought to have one of the respected and senior leaders of the Muslim community in the capital district, Imam Yaki, um, deliver a few words. Uh, so Imam Yaki, without further ado. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I'm really honored to be here. I would have regretted for not being here. Indeed, these colorful colors of knowledge, we thank Allah for more knowledge. I would like to say this. The chaplains, the imams working in prison, had three days conference here at Al Hidayah. Three days. Imams throughout New York. Some of them coming from Buffalo, others coming from Risa. Well, with this, inshallah, you are a candidate. Those things are gone. When you have the knowledge of Islamic law, and perhaps not a fact, today you could be a chaplain and imam, and imams are paid more than $80,000 a year. It's not a small job. So with this, inshallah, see Sheikh Jafar. If Sheikh Jafar endorses you, then come to me, inshallah. But let's remember, knowledge is a man. Knowledge is surely an man. Because will you implement, the question here is, Will you implement that which is given to you? Implementation is the most important aspect of knowledge. And remember, without a man, there will be no you and I. Trust, very, very important trust is dignity. Trust is honor. Trust is harmlessness. But for those who would seek knowledge, 
just to be called Imam, an Imam to some denomination, something powerful. Some of us would prefer the title, I am a Mufti, I am an Imam, I am Sheikh, I am this and that. That is not a good thing at all, if that is what you worship. If you have the knowledge, try as much as possible and implement it. Are they equal to those who know and those who do not know? Are they equal to those who know and those who do not know? They are not equal at all. So remember, brothers and sisters in Islam, today you have the manner of knowledge. Use it properly. And our sisters, surely you are blessed to have this knowledge. May Allah continue to bless all of you. Now, a Shaykh from Shaddafar, who has been a leader, not now, <laughs> Shaddafar is a leader here when I was in Ghana before coming to the United States. I came here as a graduate student. Brothers and sisters in Islam, knowledge of the deen does nothing like it. But when you have it, humility, humility, and everything will fall. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, So, as Imam Jaffer mentioned in his opening, a very important component of this program's success was the students. And I think the best way to appreciate what they accomplished is to hear from them. So without further ado, we'd like to invite um, some of the students to, to come and speak. Uh, so Sister Elena, if you will start. I'm going to give a disclaimer that I only have like four minutes and it is not going to do justice to this wonderful program that lasted two and a half years. But I want to um, start with a very interesting story. I actually registered for the program after the registration was closed. I was in New York City in the fall of 2019 for grad school in NYU, and I had no idea that I was going to be back in Albany. And by the time I came back, the registration had closed, and it was really, really sad. And I prayed to only see the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point in my life. I wanted to die into Islamic studies. I wanted to go away to actually, in more detail, study. And inshallah, one day in the future, that can so happen. But I really, really, really wanted to be a part of the program. And I made my dua and I said, Ya Rabbi, open the gates of knowledge for me until my last breath. And alhamdulillah, I, I explained the moving station and why I was late with the registration and I was able to start. And it has been one of the best blessings of my life. And the reason why I'm, I'm starting with this is I hear a lot of people struggling with their responsibilities, whether that's their college education or their children or their full-time job and thinking the door is closed for me. I can't do this. No, you can. You just have to want it. And when you want it, raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him sincerely from the depth of your heart, ask him, Allah is al fatah He will open the doors for you that you didn't even think existed. And the, the other reason why this program was such a blessing was when we were sitting in the musallah, 
surrounded by the angels, with Allah's mercy descending upon us. There is no other feeling like that. You don't get that in your secular classes anywhere. And as Ibn Malik reported the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, when you pass by the meadows of paradise, graze as you like. And the Sahaba replied and said, what are the meadows of paradise, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, circles of remembrance. And that's why, as we said in the seminary classes, it wasn't just a class. It was a piece of paradise. And learning the knowledge did not only benefit me, but it also benefited my students as I was a mentor in the girls' youth group. It continues the dawah that we are trying to achieve in this country with the American Muslim identity of our youth. And I really want to shake, thank Sheikh Jafar Shaykh Yassin and Sheikh Hussain specifically with all my heart, not only for what you have taught us, but how you have taught us. You taught us with your love, with your care, with your humor, made us laugh in the classroom as well. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed you that love, that care, and that smile, the way you showed it to us. And the truth is, we're graduating, but we still don't know anything in the grand scheme of things. And if we ever think we know something, we're actually in trouble. So, inshallah, the mindset as a student is that we don't know. Because being a student of Alm is not just something that's two and a half years and plus it's done, you get the diploma and you walk out. No. It is a life commitment. It is a journey. It is not a destination and it will go until our last breath. And I highly encourage everyone to continue this journey of knowledge. And for those who haven't started the journey yet, I want to share two very quick tips and reminders. What I often hear people say when we talk about such programs is, I don't have time. And you know what? You're right. None of us have much time in this dunya. We all are here for a very short amount of time. The question is, how will we spend that very, very short amount of time? Because it will either count for you or against you on the day when the scale is weighted. And secondly, what is so miraculous, subhanAllah, about spending time for the sake of Allah is that you don't even spend it. Look, Allah puts barakah in your time for you to do that thing and to do everything else that you want to do. Because whether it's your money, whether it's your energy, whether it's your time, Wallahi, whatever you give for Allah is never lost. In fact, Allah gives you even more. You never lose by giving to Allah. You just gain abundantly more back. And my dear brothers and sisters, we all want to cross through the gates of Jannah and to run through the gates, through the garden of paradise. But we have to be honest to ourselves. If we are not crossing through that door and that door to go to the meadows of paradise while we're in the dunya, how do we expect to get there in the Akhira? We have to be honest, we have to humble ourselves, and we have to wake up and have that sincere intention of Allah will open the door for you. And I pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. We are not graduating. It is a journey. We're going to keep going, inshallah. And as he has gathered all of us in the circle of remembrance, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in his presence in Jannat al -Fandus. Allahumma ameen, jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum. So I wonder who our next speaker is. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to call.
I'll uh, go back to the left of the stage to share a few words. Uh, one thing that I want to share today is um, giving that one is a very important thing. And before I, I walked through these doors two years ago, I always tell my friend and my brother Muhammad Javi that I do not have time. He's a student of uh, Imam Yafi, and uh, he always invited me there. And I just thought, told myself I did not have time. But he insisted all the time. I did not leave the class, but alhamdulillah, he continued to make da'wah to me and invited me to this program. And I am forever grateful. I walked into the interview and I met uh, Imam Yasin. Uh, and he did the interview. And from that moment, I thought I would continue to try. So it was a journey, and alhamdulillah, and I'm very grateful to be a part of this program because it helped me taste the sweetness of the deal. Continuing to come here, now I'm more conscious of my worship, my salat, and I'm doing that for to seek the pleasure of Allah, to get the love of Allah, rather than, you know, it's a mandatory thing that I have to do five times a day. So I'm really grateful to um, the administration, Sheikh Zafar, Sheikh Yazid, and Sheikh Hassan, and uh, Brother Hassan for making it possible while I was visiting my wife and God to continue to seek the knowledge that is given. So it's just happening all of you, everyone. Uh, as you can see, public speech is our thing. So I'm going to the remaining of my time for the next speaker, inshallah. Is that all Thank you, brother, for those words. And you know, definitely, I, I would love to commemorate those students who are not with us in person while taking the class that they were um, abroad in another country or in another state and still persisted on um, learning and staying consistent with them. And actually, what I found is that those students, in many cases, are more persistent than the students that came in person. So I guess this is a challenge for those who are coming in person. Um, you know, to always have a um, deeply rooted sense of, of desire of seeking knowledge and of continuing uh, Lastly, I would like to call Sister Uzma to say a few words. For many of us, we stayed up all night because during the day we had work, we had other jobs, other responsibilities. And even though some of our teachers said their, uh, their exams were easy, they're like a gift to us, they weren't. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, they helped, they made us study. Um, beginning, so in the beginning, when we all joined, some of us had more knowledge than others. Some of us had done seminary classes, but the way the classes were taught by our teachers, it was as if 
All of us learned something. Nobody was left behind. No matter what level you came in with, you left with knowledge. There are tons of stories I can tell you, but it's almost no your time, of how this has changed my life. So I won't do that. Um, but it did change me as a mom, as a teacher. My connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even in my job. Well, since I'm talking about my job, I just want to say one thing. To be honest, if you work at the masjid part-time, it's like a full-time job. If you work at full-time, it's the same thing as two full-time jobs. But alhamdulillah, there is so much barka and benefits in working here. It's priceless. I wouldn't change it for any other job in the world. Now, since we're on this topic, I'm going to take a moment and let you guys know to visit our website. There are a lot of job opportunities out there. You guys want this book, then, right? Check it out, okay? Okay, so I have grown spiritually. I have, spent, I have started to connect it to the Quran more. I won't forget one thing that Imam Jafar taught us in our Tazkiyah class. How to clean our hearts. Now this is very, very important because the only way we're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is all our goals one day, is through a clean heart. And I wanted to have a little bottle and fill it up with dirt and then show a presentation of how I can do that. However, I'll explain it. So what he said was, so let's say this is your heart. And because of our bad deeds, bad actions, it got dirty. So how to clean it is, what you do is, first you stop taking everything back. Just close it. Don't put anything back in your heart. And you clean it. How do you clean it? You make bigger. You do good deeds. Only good deeds. Only good words. So you clean it like that. And then you put inside it, only good things. That means don't look at anything bad. Don't say anything bad. Only good deeds and lots of liquor and duat and Quran. So I will never forget that and I will tell all uh, everybody I know so that we can all work on it together. Um, good intentions, we all know good intentions are very important. However, good intentions with knowledge, that's amazing. Because then you can move mountains. As a mother, I learned so many stories of the Sahabas, which became bedtime stories for my kids and lessons that we learned together. As a teacher, how can I teach kids when I don't know? And those kids are smart. Even after we learned what we learned, they ask us questions, which we had to respond to, was, I don't know. So what do we do? We text Sheikh Yassin. And then get the answer, which we learned in the process. Now, I just want to say thank you to all the teachers for teaching us the way you did. It was amazing. We learned a lot. And it's about implementing what we learned. And of course, Brother Hussain, who made it all possible. Now, when we were getting the awards, when I touched it, it was heavy. No, not the weight heavy, but it was scary. Do you know why it was scary? Because it was a responsibility that was being put in my hand. It was the things that I learned that Allah SWT was going to ask me. Did you implement it? I can't say I didn't know. Nobody told me. They taught me. And I have to implement it. So I'm going to be held accountable. And that is scary for everything that we learned. Please make a lot for me. I just want to say thank you, everybody. Now I'm here. and uh, we appreciate all of your reflections and all of your um, examples. 
Thank you so much. Um, next, I would like to request someone from the leadership who has been in this community way from the start. And it's important that in times like these to remember, um, you know, when you look at the walls of this masjid and the structure of this masjid and, and, and the spirit of this masjid, that it didn't just haphazardly come together. Um, this was the result of firstly Allah and then by um, dedicated individuals who um, put a lot of time and effort into making this a reality, and we are bearing the fruits of that. So without further ado, Dr. Khaibatha. It has been so wonderful to be here with him. You won't believe it, but I've been waiting for this event for the last more than 30 years. You know, um, I had several discussions with Sheikh Mukhtar going back to early 90s, early 90s, and we talked about a program something like this. A regular education program, other than just the helicopter that we used to have. And uh, we talked about how it should be done. I was proposing a full time seminary, and I said there is a building, 18 year apartment building that, that you can have and have the students come and stay there and learn on a regular basis. But then he said he wanted a house on the lake or something, a retreat such as the retreat that we go to at Rondex. I spent a long time looking for something like that. So either they were too big or too small or too expensive or whatever, but I could never find exactly what we needed. You know, so but it's something that we've thought about for a long time and it really gives me great pleasure to know that, you know, we have something and we embarked on a journey and we congratulate the entire community for the success in Shadra. And in particular the Imams who have been and leading the cemetery and contributing. And like everybody said, this is only the beginning. There is so much more ahead. Um, I think Elm is a, an ocean with, you know, with no borders. And it's still, but I think just to get, get the, you know, the film that we need socially for everyday life, that itself is, requires a lot of commitment. And I think uh, we're going to have to continue, inshallah, moving on in this direction. All, all these things are difficult. And I think what, what the people have graduated, I think there are a lot of things that they need to do. Besides teaching this, uh, and to the, to the families, to the friends, to the children, I think we need to uh, be involved in school, uh, where your children go. Uh, I think the schools are always looking for people to, uh, the parents to come and talk to them, their class about uh, different religions, one year for those, being involved in the schools for your children. There are a lot of opportunities that are missed because we are not involved. Uh, libraries are looking for people who can give them ideas to which books they can, they should acquire. The uh, libraries are also they have regular classes and seminars and things of that nature that people can contribute. That's something that people need to do. There are interfaith groups, there are a lot of community groups. So not only be involved in this community, but uh, other places uh, and, and uh, systems as well. Uh, there are, in, in the high schools, people need to take secondary, uh, second language. There is no reason why we can, the Muslims can't get together and ask the schools to give Arabic as a second language, one of the second languages. And that can be very easily done. So there are lots of things that we need to do beyond what we are doing right now and uh, uh, make the community move forward. Uh, again, uh, so because all the food of them actually would like to be the implementation of it, and that's something that all of us have to work together. And uh, it seems like 
we need a bigger building and uh, one of the things that we need to do is build the gym next on the side of the building and I think that is also very needed so that be involved in everything and be, be a part of the masjid um, and um, let's all inshallah work together and make this even better than it is. But we thank God for the great, all the wonderful things that have been happening and we pray that this continues and we make, we make inshallah better and better. That's my say. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Khaled, for sharing those insights. And before we conclude with Sheikh Yassin, I just wanted to um, share something with you. So within each of your bags, you may have noticed the gift I chose for you. And this was something that I personally selected. Uh, I'm guessing some of you have not looked. And I commend you if you have not looked, because that means you really wanted to take it home and give it time and, and really think about it. Um, so, what I have chosen for you is an hourglass. And the reason I have chosen an hourglass for you is because looking at the hourglass, I think it represents something very fundamental. And it really captures the true nature of time. Whereas a regular clock will just wind endlessly and endlessly, and you don't really feel the time passing, the hourglass has a deadline. The hourglass has a start and it has an end. And once the time has gone, it doesn't go back up the other way. And it is our choice and our endeavor, without a doubt, that with our time, we, we choose to build a mountain with every single piece of sand, rather than let it be carried away by the wind. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah ta'ala, I came here to conclude this program. And I would like to leave each and every one of us with a couple items, particularly the graduate students. I would like to express my joy, my happiness of your achievement, accomplishment. But as much as I am happy, as much as I am delighted, as much as I don't want to deceive you. I think I don't want to cheat you. The real honor, brothers and sisters, is not in these reports and is not in these certificates. The real honor is to live by the teachings that we have learned, the divine ideas, the prophetic teachings that we have learned and, and experienced throughout this world. The real honor, brothers and sisters, is to honor this ilm. As Sister Uthman said, and several people said, we will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. Each and every one of us. And Wallah is not, is not a joke. It is not a joke. لَن تَزِلَّ قَدَمَا عَبْدِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَسَّ يُسْأَلَ عَنْ قَرْبَعِ And the Prophet said, you will not be allowed to move forward one step on the day of judgment until you answer four questions. One of them is about your moment. And let's, let's prepare this answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have learned about Allah, about Ibadat. We have learned about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his high character. We have learned so much. The and if you would like to evaluate this program, the authentic way to evaluate this program is not by grades, is not by numbers. is how this program is contributing to the change of our community. How this program is making our community better. How this program is raising our, our character, planting nobility in each and every one of us. This is how we can evaluate this program. So if this program is contributing to the betterness of our community, then we are in the right direction. If it's not, then there is something wrong we are doing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his rahmah, by his tawfir to make this program a tool to make our community a better community. To make our community a community that represents 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We heard recently in India, people of, of no morality and no akhlaq and no tarbiyah insulting the most noble man on earth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have, we share part of the responsibility, brothers and sisters. How we are presenting our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa especially here in the West, how we are presenting him. Co-workers, classmates, friends, neighbors. I talk to so many community members and they have been living in a particular neighborhood for decades. They have never invited non-Muslim friends to their house. It is a crime. Wallahi, it is a crime that we will have to answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Invite them, teach them, talk to them and be ambassadors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And lastly, we have to learn to be humble. I would like to share with you two stories, inshallah ta'ala, and then we take a picture, the graduate students and the teachers, inshallah ta'ala. One day, Africa, North Africa, sent delegation, the most noble people to meet Imam Malik scholars and leaders of North Africa to meet Imam Malik in Medina al -Munawar. and they have taken with them the most difficult complicated questions in the religion to ask Imam Malik it is an opportunity that so precious they went Delegation from North Africa to meet Imam Ahmed and ask these questions. They made um, Imam Malik, I mean, to meet Imam Malik. They arrived, they had an appointment with Imam Malik, and they started asking their questions. They asked so many questions. And Imam, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, among all their questions, do you know how many questions he answered? Do you know how many questions he answered? Four. Only four questions. And then for the rest he said, I don't know. And the graduates, I didn't want to look upward, but I wanted to share this in the, in, in the diploma. I don't know. If we have learned anything in this journey, we learn, I don't know. And then the delegation said, yeah, Imam, we came from North Africa, from, from Ifriqiya, and everybody waiting for us. He said, go back to Africa and tell everybody, Imam Malik does not know. So, brothers and sisters, let's not get deceived by these certificates and diplomas and awards. Alhamdulillah, it is, it is something that we need to encourage one another. It is something not necessarily inherently evil. However, let's not get distracted. We just started this journey. Another story which is with Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah. Imam Ahmed, who is another mountain of knowledge. A sign, a miracle in this earth, Imam Ahmad. There is a very interesting story reported by his son, Saleh. One of his children he has two sons, one of them is Saleh, who reported this story. He said, When my father was dying, he was losing conscious and then gaining conscious, but in between he was saying, Lay sabah, lay sabah, which means not yet, not yet. And he was finding difficulty speaking and talking. So when he gained conscious, his son started asking, my, my father, why are you saying Lisa back? And then he loses consciousness again. And then when he gained conscious, he said, Lisa back, Lisa back. Finally, when he was able to talk, and just maybe a couple of days before he deported this dunya, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he said, Shaitan, when I lose conscious, Shaitan comes to me. Shaitan is coming to me and he's saying, Imam Ahmed, you made it. Ya Imam Ahmed, you have, you beat me. 
Hani ben Mehmet bir sürü plak, not yet, not yet. The fight until the soul leaves the body. So Shaytan will come to you and me and inflame our egos. Now I know. Now I have a diploma. Just don't, don't be naive, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, we have to continue this journey and we continue to learn. But always remember, Imam Ahmed, Imam Malik, these are stars in knowledge. If we give all our times combined and we live another thousand years, I don't think we will achieve a fraction of the knowledge of one of these two Imams. Yet, they said we don't know. So Sheikh Jafar is saying, so we didn't learn, so when we meet, I show off my knowledge, my arguments, the number of verses I memorized, the number of hadith I don't know. I will leave you with Imam Ata. Ata is one of the students of Ibn Abbas, rahimahullah. One of his students, Imam al awzai said, he used to be in gatherings. And people talk about matters, explaining it to Imam Ata, Ibn Abi Rabah, rahimahullah, explaining teaching Imam Atar Nabi Rabah in his old age, in his 80s, certain things. Awza'i said, one of his students, he said, he would listen as if he doesn't know anything. And he was teaching these matters before the speaker, he was, was even born. Imam Atar was teaching these matters. But he's not, the knowledge was not something to show off with. It's not something to think you are better than others. The only, anything that knowledge would give us is more responsibility, more humbleness, more humility. And we do our best. We do our best, brothers and sisters. Let's not get deceived by these facts, brothers and sisters. And I do appreciate your commitment. I do appreciate your devotion to knowledge. I do appreciate your love, your respect to your teachers. So, I'm talking about myself, wallah, I don't know. And the only reason why we teach is because we live in the West where these scholars are not available. Just we are trying to be this intermediary to transport knowledge to you, brothers and sisters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover our mistakes, our deficiencies, and forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the team that have been working for the success that we see today, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue, bless you all, brothers and sisters, and I am so happy, brothers and sisters, I am so happy to see our community celebrating knowledge, to see all of, all, all of you, brothers and sisters, in this journey of knowledge. Zakumullah khair, barakallahu fikum. What is the time right now, Hussam? Time for Maghrib, the Adhan. So inshallah ta'ala, we are going to pray in Maghrib. After the Maghrib, we call the graduate students, inshallah ta'ala, maintain your jubba, right? And inshallah ta'ala, after, after the salat, we can take collective uh, pictures with graduate students and the teachers and the leadership, inshallah ta'ala, inside the musallah. The picture will be inside the musallah. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah reward you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.